welcome to the first video of hashtag Ivy Talks in which I talk to you about my Ivy experiences so that we can uh, cry and laugh about them together. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sinead. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience with the HL Physics IA. Wow, that was honestly such an experience. <laughs> My IB Physics HLIA was honestly like the proudest uh, piece of work that I produced in the IB. I somehow came out with the end with a perfect score. I got a 7 in it and I got 24 out of 24 marks in it. But that is not to say that I got it easily. No, no, no. That uh, IA experience was incredibly challenging. I don't think I have ever worked on some sort of piece of academia uh, written work so hard in my life. So I started my physics IA about like a week before like we were like given designated time to do them in the lab. That's just because like I wanted to get a head start. I didn't want to like spend the lab time that we were given uh, to be like, hmm, what should I do? I just wanted to get started with it. So how this began is that I pretty much decided early on that there was absolutely no way that anyone was going to make me do a hands-on experiment. I had done so many freaking experiments in the lab because my physics teacher loved doing experiments. Uh, I mean, they were all required, but like, I don't think like most kids actually do them properly. We had to do like full on proper reports for every single uh, physics experiment that our teacher gave us. And it was like so much work. By the end of doing all of those practice IAs, I was completely sick of the lab and I didn't want to spend hours in a lab banging balls against the wall or something like that. So how I began with my IA is that I began with a lot and lot of researching. I did so much research. What I did first was that uh, I initially went through the entire IB guide. I like went through the guide. I like read it all. I read everything that uh, I could find in it about the physics IA. And then I spent like a good two days just like completely analyzing the rubric and like rereading it like a bunch of times and just making sure I knew exactly what I needed to do in order to uh, score the marks because that's the most important thing. And then after that I spent, I could say like a good like week or like few days uh, reading IB uh, physics example IAs and this was so 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 important. Before IB, before I started with my amazing physics teacher, my science classes were just awful. They were awful like I didn't learn anything like we didn't learn how to write research papers we didn't learn how to do experiments we didn't learn how to do write-ups at all like we didn't have any GCSEs to help us prepare for that so for me reading all of those examples really gave me a lot of like ideas about how to structure my IA how to write my IA how to uh, even do my IA like what even an IA is because even though I did do practice experiments like, I still didn't know like what the full-blown IA was like meant to be like. I found two websites which had uh, physics IAs and their marking scheme, and I just read so many of them. Obviously, I didn't read them in detail because, you know, they're like, uh, like, they're interesting, but they're boring, you know what I mean? I just read them to, like, try and figure out, like, what's a good structure, what makes it good, what makes it bad, what shouldn't you put in, what should you put in, and just uh, made notes on them and tried to gain as much knowledge as I could from those examples so that I wouldn't make those mistakes that some people made in the examples in my own IA. Now, this sounds like I, like, knew exactly what I was doing. No, I didn't. Like, the reason why I was reading all about these IAs is because I had no idea what I was doing. And I wasn't just gonna, like, leave it up to chance just because, like, I blame my teacher for, or whatever on, like, not giving me the right information. Like, the reason why I was doing all this background research was because I realized, oh my god, I have no idea how to do this. None of my teachers are telling me how to do this, so I'm just gonna go out and figure it out on my own. You really gotta go out there and try and find that information for yourself. I IB teachers, like, they're really smart and they know what they're doing. They don't know you personally, they can't understand your position, and therefore they don't know what information that you need. They can only make a guess. Right, but you can only read so much theory before you actually start doing stuff. So, it took me quite a while to choose a topic for my IA. My biggest recommendation for you is to not, like, sit there and brainstorm, like, hmm, what physics IA should I do? For me, the ideas always come out of research. So, like, I don't sit there pondering because I know that, like, the information in my head is not going to come up with a good physics IA. Uh, instead, what I did is I just, like, searched the internet for, like, hours, like, looking for, like, interesting physics ideas, looking, looking at interesting physics articles, looking at interesting physics videos until I found something that worked for me. Now, one thing I became really interested in was simulations. I don't know why. I'm such a nerd, guys. You're gonna have to accept that. One idea was to do some sort of gravity simulation. I had another idea to do something with waves and like, you know, diffraction patterns. 
but eventually I came across this video by 3 wheel one brown I'll link it in the description, it's amazing! Which was about colliding blocks, momentum, and the digits of pi. Basically, in this video, this guy is trying to show... When the mass of that first block is some power of 100 times the mass of the second, the total number of collisions have the same digits as pi. So if one of the blocks is one kilogram and then the other block is one kilogram, that means there's going to be three collisions. But if one of the blocks is one kilogram and then the other block is 100 kilograms, that means there's going to be 31 collisions. So I watched a lot of videos and read a lot about this phenomena and decided that I was going to make this somehow. I didn't know how. Like, I didn't really know whether this is going to work. I honestly, like, like I had no idea whether this is going to work. I really wanted to make this uh, weird idea that I found interesting into my own physics idea. For a while, I struggled to figure out how I could bring nuance into this subject and like uh, allow me to like add something to it because you can't just steal the idea. You have to like put in uh, some nuance to the situation and you have to like add on top of that idea. I'm not a coder, so I found someone online who found who had written a pretty simple code for this phenomena. I took the code from his experiment and worked to explain how the equations in his code. Uh, kind of like to the physics equations of momentum. Now this was not easy. I literally ran into so many problems while doing this. Like I had to do that derivation so many times before like I could actually get the derivation. I asked my teacher, he couldn't do the derivation. So I spent like a good two days just working out how I can like make my derivation the same as uh, what he's got in his what what he's got in his code. And then once I got the simulation running and I tested it, I kept having issues because I couldn't compete past the four digits of pi. I could only count up to 3,141 collisions. Beyond that, the system just broke, and I had no idea how to fix it. <laughs> so then after a bunch of crying and researching, I like reached out to my coder friend. It was something to do with the frame rate per second, I don't really understand it. And then I decided that I was going to do a geometrical analysis to explain where pi came from uh, by using my own words and my own diagrams. But I was using like images that were created from a uh, simulation that had a different uh, equation to the one that I was already using. So like one of them was using like 16 times 100 to the power of n and then another one was using 100 to the power of n. And I had no idea what these two, like why were they different, I don't know. So that's basically all I did in my first draft. And this draft came out to be like 27 pages long, it's insane. And when I handed it to my teacher, he was like shocked. He was like, Sinead, what is this? Because I mainly just added a bunch of useless stuff in the report that I didn't really need. When he gave me back my report a few days later, there was just red ink all over the place. He was like, this is wrong. This doesn't make sense. What does this mean? This is useless. You know, there are just so many mistakes in it and there was just like red ink all over the place, uh, which I was completely grateful for because the first draft, if you don't have a lot of corrections, you're not giving it to the right person, basically. Uh, you should be thankful for every correction that you make because that's one mistake that you don't have to make in that final draft. And he also suggested that I do something new to my physics IA, so I was not done there. So his suggestion, because the problem with my IA is that it didn't have any like nuance to it, like it didn't have any like personal input, it didn't have anything like new to add to it. So what my physics teacher suggested is that I tweak the code, play with it a little bit, to see if there's any value of momentum that can be lost so that the value of pi can still be computed. At the time, this was really stressful for me. I thought I was done with my A. I thought I was like, hey guys, I finished so early before all you did, but turns out no, I had so... Uh, at this point, I thought I was like almost there, but then I didn't realize just how far away from the finish line I was. Like, I was so far at this point, but I thought I was like halfway done or something. So, basically, I had this thing about uh, the losing momentum and seeing whether you can still compute the value of pi into my uh, physics idea. But was I done? Was I done? Well, no, of course not. The next week when it came around to actually doing our physics IA, my teacher had set up like an air track, uh, which is basically a thing that allows you to simulate frictionless elastic collisions like this. Yeah, so he set that up in the class and he was basically like, Sinead, you don't really have any like talk about independent variables or limitations to your experiment. You need to do a real life experiment in which you like demonstrate what you were trying to do in the simulation. And I was like, what? Why? The last thing I wanted to do was do a hands-on experiment. Why do I have to do this? He said it's because, yeah, like I can't get enough evaluation points 
unless I add something in hands-on so that I can talk about the limitations of my experiment. Because I didn't have any, like, limitations of my experiment. There's nothing limiting about a computer, you know what I mean? There's nothing, like, limiting about the code. Like, the code is perfect. It runs. It's, like, fine. So what I had to do is I got two gliders and I put them on this air track and I simulated the ratio of one to one uh, collision experiment thing. Also my teacher didn't really tell me how like or what to do with this air track thing and this like collision experiment thing that I could do. He was just like, hey, have some fun playing around with this and see if you can incorporate it into your IA. Because one of the gliders didn't even work. I just like kept getting caught on the glider and I spent like two classes trying to like tweak it and fix it to try and make it like actually glide but it's just never worked it was so difficult like this was just so unnecessary but like it made my AA a bit better I guess man logger pro is the best and the worst thing <laughs> like it's so good at what it's doing but it's so like like it just takes so much time like clicking all of the dots right so I do this experiment I add it into my AA I add a write-up I have some uh, limitations I talk about variables oh my god I think it's okay. I honestly have no idea at this point. And I give it to my teacher. Comes back so much more red ink. Like it doesn't stop there. Like so many things are wrong. There was just like so many like like mini things that he was like, this doesn't make sense. Or, like underlines a paragraph. What are you trying to say here? My physics teacher was like so rough on me. Like he was just like questioning basically everything that I did. So I had to like work so hard to like make sure that like everything in my eye made sense because my physics teacher wouldn't like accept anything that wasn't like perfect basically. So I rewrite this thing again. I fix all of the mistakes. Like I'm constantly going to my teacher and I'm being like, what do you mean? Like, what does this mean? I don't like get how to do this. And he'd be like, oh, it's this thing. Uh, there's this problem with your IA and then I'd go away and then I'd like try to fix it not be able to get it come back and be like I don't I don't know how to fix this problem can you help me like I don't know how to do this derivation he'd be like no you have to do it yourself and then I'd go away try and figure it out again I'd come back and be like please like I legit do not know how to do this and he'd be like okay here's a hint and then I'd go and try to figure it out then I'd come back and be like okay did I get it and if I'm lucky then he says yes. I eventually get down to like what I consider is a good final draft. And was I done there? No, of course not. You know why? Because it was 23 pages long and the page limit is 12 pages. You have to do some photo maneuvering ninja shit when you're like trying to cut down on physics IAs. Like I was putting things in graphs, I was putting things in multiple columns, I was making the text smaller. And if you think cutting is easy, it's not. It takes some serious skills. So eventually I got it down to about 15 pages uh, 14 if you don't include the bibliography and I don't and then I sent in a final draft and stepped away from my physics IA thinking that I was never gonna talk about it again but look here we are if you're doing a physics IA and you want to get those high marks uh, first thing I can tell you is I don't expect your first draft to be perfect little of my first draft actually ended up in the final draft get your teacher to just like basically rip your first draft uh, to shreds I had so many problems that like I never thought I would be able to solve when I realized that the two simulations had different equations i was like done i was like i don't i don't know what the, why are they different i was just persistent like i worked my way around things you gotta take each problem at face value you do one problem you solve it you do another problem you solve it you do another problem you solve it you get to a problem that you can't solve you ask your teacher and hopefully they can help you success doesn't come from making one perfect IA in a night it comes from doing one draft uh getting feedback on it doing another draft getting feedback on it until eventually you have something that you're proud of you know it was kind of fun because you see progress if you do it that way. You just gotta take it one step at a time. And if you focus on doing one problem at a time and then doing the other problem without thinking too much about what the big task ahead of you is, then that's the only way you're gonna get through. Break it down, try and figure out a plan. I promise you, you'll make it through it. <laughs> like, cause that's how I did it. You can message me on my Instagram, link in the description, and I'll see you next time. Bye.